Good morning and welcome back to Big Girl Hunters. Back in the campaign session and back on the water. It's been a been a bit of a bit of a rough winter. We're now in um, late Feb or middle late Feb, Feb, February. And uh, I've been used to, I've been doing some day sessions on on the little pit over the road just to get a few bites. And it's been good fun just doing the days and that. But um, back back to my proper carping. Um, got three nights ahead of me, which is awesome really buzzing and I managed to get on a swim where I lost that fish and had that bream just before Christmas in December so that's really cool um, most of the fish have been held up in this area I, I'd imagine it, it's very very mild probably seven or eight degrees so I'd imagine they're starting to move over but there's always fish behind this rope and uh, you would have seen me move off so I'm quite quite happy to get in the swim for a couple of nights I had a couple of walk round there's a couple of lads well I've got a few lads fishing so I had a work lad to my left who's leaving this morning said so two or three fish I did actually set up start setting up a few swim the swim to, to left of him but then after about half an hour I moved down to this swim um, just because I've got, I've got this tree line this lovely tree line which you'll, you'll see in a sec um, there's the rods that you see I've got this I've got this lovely tree line and this own bit so all back there is where the fish have been held holding hopefully they'll, they'll get moving I'm going to give them some bait and uh, not too much, just a little bit, bit of corn and that, a bit of boily, a bit of the nutcracker, the usual. And I'll, we'll, but we'll, we'll talk about that in, in a sec, in a bit. So there we go. So yeah, I've been uh, been walking around for a couple of hours. Haven't I haven't seen anything at all. Um, well, I saw. I say that. Like I said, I was down there. Didn't know much to go. But I know the fish have been holding holding about a few swims to the left. And then I walked this down there just to have a look, and uh, I saw one just nick its head up right behind, just behind the rope behind me. So it's a, that was the only thing to go by. And obviously, I, had, I know fish have been caught out of here this winter. Not many. It's been quite a tough winter on here. So what? So what I've done um, is uh, just got a few rigs tied up and that, and uh, got, I haven't got the rods out yet. I've just luckily I, I look in my in my phone in my notes, and I know that this spot to the road where where it's harder. Because then the marker is this white house or the boy, and um, it's a little bit harder now. I find you get more certainly up this end. You get more of the bites just off the hard stuff, but you still get a nice donk. And I've just whacked up, tied up a nice little um, multi rig. This is a I think it's a size 10 or 12. I think it's a size 12 actually. Um, nutcracker yellow, like flora yellow pop up. Um, it's a size 8 BMG sort of chod style hook. Some of the BMG coated braid and a bit of putty and the rest of it. So um, that little multi rig, it just it just sit will sit. If I can show you, literally just off the bit of putty, just like that. So I'm just gonna whack that out. I'm just gonna whack three different coloured out um, little pop ups, and for the day, give it a couple of hours. Get to afternoon, get the marker out, find some more harder stuff, give them some bait. Jonah, my mate's coming down at three o'clock, so it'll be nice to. I do, I do, I do like fishing with Jonah. He's a good lad. He's a good mate of mine, and it's always nice to fish with him. And um, hopefully, the guy, guy on the left, he'll be able to jump in next to me, which is really nice. To be fair, if I fancied any swim, because the guy did a, a I'll say a big hit, probably five fish in a week to the left, and he had a nice thirty and all the rest of it. Um, some nice big fish out to the left of me, so that's where I wanna, would want to go. And I, I didn't realise the guy was leaving until talking to him. Now I'm in here. Jonah's going to get that swim, hopefully. So that's good for him and. He hasn't had as many fish as what I've out of here. Um, he's had some nice ones, um, so it'd be nice for him to get to get a fish because he's uh, he's got a baby on the way, and I know he won't be able to get out as much as what he used to. So, it'd be nice for him to catch one. I just want to see a fish now, boy. You know, serious angling heads back on. It's just for now. I'll be doing a couple of nights a week, just getting in tune with the lake and with the lads down here and that and the rest of it, and it's uh, all good in the hood. So, I'll. Uh, I better get this one out on the spot.
Right, so the rods are all out now. Um, you see them all there, just chilling. They're all out of spots, I know. So uh, I'll take you through the swim. So this is a swim we call Gates. Uh, I've fished it before. It's got all the tr all the houses in the background there. Look, let's, let's spy on, see if we can see what's going on. I don't know, but that fire looks nice up there. Look. And uh, so come out of here. We've got this, you've got this tree line here. So this is where the lake ends, and this is the last swim. All winter, I found the fish have been held hold up. All on that back tree, like there's the corner, all on that back tree line. All along there. And they've all just, obviously you see those boys there, there's the rope. It's about 110 out now, and they've pulled it a bit forward so it's not as far chuck. And it's uh, yeah, all the way along that back margin, they love it back there. So, like I said, I had a good walk around, spoke to a couple of, a couple of I didn't even pick my swim for, I've actually, for a couple of hours. I mean, I, I worked in somewhere and then moved quickly. It's because someone came to the left of me, I had a guy to the right and I was penned in. I mean, the, the, the swim I ideally wanted, the, the guy's just left, which is there. So yeah, this is a this is the swim, and I'm quite tight to that boy. That's 25 wraps out there. Where is it going? There. So I have one there, one to that boy there. And then one, it went real tight, just in that overhanging tree, went right tight in there. I've got all this tree line as well, all along here looks good. So I imagine that Dave Goat is going to go there, where them ducks are. It's one of his favourite swims. He had quite a big hit in the summer out there. So these are the three, three rigs that are going to be going out for tonight. I mean, um, I've just... At the minute I've just chucked out two multi-rigs and, and a chod rig. Um, different, three different colour pop-ups. Um, you know, hoping that they could roll off, you know, all bright, bright attraction or not. But um, through the night, I like to have a couple on the deck here. They look, they do like a bite on the deck. I find that in the daytime, you can nick a few bites sometimes by using sort of pop-ups, stuff in your face, zigs and all that stuff. So I whack the pop-ups out, but I'm going to have a few on the deck and I'll uh, show you the ones. Um, starting this one. And this is the one that you've seen me use before. Um, my favourite is that, it's that sort of IQ D rig. Um, that I like to use it with a. A lot of people just use it with the little mini rig swivel, but I've, I've found with the mini little micro ring swivel, that, I don't know if you can see that there, just gives it that extra bit of movement. And I dropped hardly, I think I've only dropped one fish off this, which was that, which is in this swim actually, I was gutted. Um, but I, that was due the, the lead didn't eject, and I used big four and a half ounce leads, and which I normally like to drop off on on the tape, but it didn't for some reason. I had it on too tight. But anyway, that's that's in the past. But yeah, so that's that one. Just a movement on there. And if we tip this up, this uh, the way that this this rig works. I mean. You see there, just whoosh, turns, 
and you've been nailed and it is always in the bottom lip razor razor sharp hook it's a size 4 curve from B BMG and I've uh, sharpened down the point with my kit um, sharpening hooks is something I've been into for, for a long time but um, I've used different sorts of sharpeners but you know, after all the, after all everything that the people have been going on about it, the Jag kit. Oh my God! By far, just the the clamp thing. This, I'll show, and I'll show you how to do that later. I've I've had a good old play with it. So that's the first. Anyway, that's the first one. And the hook bait. I've got um one of my uh, Nutcracker dumbbells, just chopped in half, all glugged up with the Nutcracker gug. Um, tipped off with a little matching nutcracker little while I've just if you see there it's it's half the dumbbell but three quarters making a little snowman Ooh, pot of pop ups running down so it's just like that so over over overall I mean that's a temp that's that's a, it's probably only about fourteen mil bait if that so that's that We've got the second one, which is on the same rig. But that is a nutcracker wafter. But it's, it's soaking in a little bright almond liquid, it's in the almond goo, which everyone knows about. But yeah, it's a, a little wafter, 18 mil wafter. So that's another option for them. So you've got the yellow and the pink, but it's not a bright, bright pink. It almost makes a purple with the, and then just a, on a stiff inch rig, just a nutcracker pop up. Oh, getting pink everywhere. There we go. And that's just a little cork ball. I think it's probably about 14 miller on a little stiff inch rig. So two on the deck, one on the bottom over my mix, and I will show you my my mix. At some point, very very basic, but I'll, uh, I will show you it at some point later. Hopefully, won't be too long. I've got three nights ahead of me. Say so not not much come out. It's still winter, still Feb. So hopefully, just I'll get one. I'm buzzing to get one. All right, tight lines. Mr. Mallard. Beautiful greens and purples on that head. Look at it. He's gorgeous. Bright yellow peak. Peak. <laughs> Bright yellow beak. Nice browns on him. Tell you what, he's going to get all the birds he is. Jonah's almost arriving. I've been... Four people have been trying to get into his swim. That I'm saving for him. Because it's the swim that's done all the bites this winter. To be fair, I want to get in it myself. But I've already moved once. There's no point. I want him. I want him to catch as well. I'm a nice lad like that. And I do fancy my chance of winds trickling in here a little bit. And this, <laughs> the difference is what ten yards between, ten fifteen yards between each rod anyway. So it's not even the rods are out. Just waiting. My, my bolly. Nutcracker waiting. Sam Wally's just turned up with blasting music out of his car. I think it was Ed Sheeran, and I'm pretty sure that's my mate. <laughs> Watch you try and catch him. Catch him on film. There he is, look at him, the little mug, look. Got his ringwood hoodie on, good lad. So it was him pumping out the bloody music. And the McGann.
<laughs> Let's go have a word with him then. Well, good morning. Quick update. Um, done my first night. Um, I've had a couple of bream, um, which is a good sign. Uh, I'm fishing al alongside a couple of my mates. And they, uh, no one else has had anything that I've heard of. I'm going to have a walk around the lake in a bit this afternoon and see, see if anyone's had anything, see if I can find some fish. But, um, yeah, had had a bream, at, I suppose, at about 6, 7 o'clock, I think it was. I can't quite remember exactly. It's all right. And uh, sort of let, let it rest. I've noticed if, if you, um, on here, when, when you get the bream, if you start putting bait, I'm normally all about putting the bait straight out straight away. I've noticed that you carry on the bream um, just straight and they'll just and they'll be on you um, and clear you out so what I did is I waited a bit got the rod back out and then put a few spawns out just before dark and normally and then I did again I didn't have one another a bream until two o'clock so I'd imagine I mean I did put quite a fair bit of bait out of me and I put about ten spawns out which is quite a lot for this time of year so um, and had another bream at about two o'clock in the morning so and a few bleeps since so it's a uh, it's definitely a good sign um, for, for the bream and sometimes you've got to wade through them I was fishing two on the deck yesterday, last night I've, I prefer to fish on the deck here um, and then one on a pop up which is more towards the snags just in case there's any sort of dead leaf to try us on the bottom but um, I was thinking the baiting because I've only seen one fish to put out zigs or not but there's no point just putting out zigs for the sake of it unless you see fish um, just whacking these back out um, I've, I've noticed that the pop-ups do pretty well here in the day so sort of fish them for, again three different colours so it's a unreal stiff hinge, stiff hinge rig it's a 20 pound IQ boom the anti-tangle sleeve oh no it's not 20 pound IQ um, it's a 15 pound this is some of the the BMG I've been testing this BMG fluorocarbon and I'll show you that in a bit it's 15 pounds and then you just got a little nutcracker pop up on there a little 12 miller or 10 miller I think it's 12 actually and that's just gonna yeah, just gonna go out there and I'll whack that out and we're a bit closer to the spot where I had the bream and I'll, we'll see see what's going on both the other lads haven't had much and I'm gonna show you a, another pop-up rig that I've been using through the winter, the multi-rig, it's something that I've, I used to use a while ago and it's uh, I've been thinking about it, I mean the stiff hinges and choddies I've had such good success on them but really when you really think about it there the multi-rig there's a lot of advantage to it, one but we'll talk about that later and um, it's something I've been playing around with just because of just because of ease I mean we all like to have a little change, I'm not one for, for changing and doing a lot of rigs, I've got two bottom bait rigs, a PVA bag rig for solid bags and a couple of pop-up rigs which are basically the same the choddies and the stiff hinges which are the same but just with a with a, with a boom um, so yeah we have to it, it's a change off off a rig it's quite but yeah I've been messing around with it having a few bites and that so it's all good let's get this it's looking nice and glorious we didn't have a frost I got up extra early, I set my alarm for five, woke my mate up, but um, we, we sort of watched the sun come up and we were watching for shows and we didn't see one, which is not the best. I thought you might see one at least back there somewhere. Tell a lie, look, there is a bit of frost on there. Got Ryan down there. And there's Dave, old Jonah. Looking like a gangster there. Oh, what rig has he got there? Let's have a little spy. Is that a little stiff hinge I see with a white pop up?
time for, to get my rod out. I've left two of them out. What are you doing? I'm just going to tie a seg on because uh, it's not happening on the bottom. You've got you fishing on the bottom there and why next to on the bottom. So What colour? I've got yellow and black. And I'm going to put a bit of um, goo on it. What flavour? Probably go for... Um, go for the Mystic? Mystic Spice or the Coconut Cream. Let's see, can we get any sign? We need to get one of those guru gizig things. My zigs get fucked. Yeah, good storage. How 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 long are you doing it? This is three and a half feet. This one. We already had it tied up, so it's ready to go. Good lad, good lad. So, yeah, I'll probably do another one at six foot or something. So you got your zig. You can see it there, look. Just shows you how clear the water is though, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly looks quite good. Yellow definitely would be the right colour for this time of year, I'd say. With the black as well. Look at those birds, they go nuts for it. This is what we have to deal with. You couldn't put a couple out towards them double boys here, how about 110 yards, could you? <laughs> Here we have the ringwood seagull. They like to flock over Jonah's bait. Right, so I'm just going to talk about the mix that I've been putting out here. Um, I had two bream off it so far, so, so obviously it's getting them grubbing. I don't know if there'll be much bait out there left. I put about 10 spawns. It's quite a lot really, um, to be fair, because it, it is still cold, but uh, the bream do like get on it. So start off with um, just some these little nutcracker. Um, and what I do, the old crusher tool, is us the first couple. I grind down. This nutcracker is lovely and soft, and it just grinds down into such a you see really nice fine powder. So I do a couple of those. One running away. Oh, that sun is lovely. Get it right nice and thin. This is really, really old, this crusher. It's still going. And then I do a couple. Just a few. So you just... One, two three spins and it's a lot chunkier just so there's some bigger bits out there one two three and then the ham and then a nice handful of whole baits a bit of corn just about a quarter of a tin with some of the juices as well Got some, some chili hemp here. This is the bait tech one. I'm just going to put just a handful of that. I always bring in too many. I find the bream, love it. Give it a good mix up. Then 
dash of the nutcracker gloves, which is like my favourite smelling thing. Smells all sweet and caramelly, a bit like Scopex, a bit sweet. It's a nice one, not too much. It's really quite good. And then this. This stuff I've been loving this through the winter. Some uh, garlic goo, but you only need a little bit of it really because it's so stinky. But I find it, it, it seems to go well with most things. Most things the the garlic flavour seems to go well with most. Give it and make it a nice haze as well. Yeah, you can see that. That's the mix. Very visual. The water's so clear. But you'll see, if I come bring some down to the margin, you'll see like because I'm sticking on just off which would look a bit like that down there makes a lovely cloud and hopefully they'll come along and have it the only thing with this with this mix because it's really light and fluffy I mean I'm, I'm I'm banging it out at about 110, so it's quite it's quite a distance for such a light mix, so you really have to smash it. Oh. And I'll, I'll get a couple out there in a sec. shake it so it fills down to the bottom. So it's basically 25 wraps to the mark, so I'm just, I've got it around the distance of it, and I'm just about to have a little bit. last time I was fishing is. <laughs> so this is a tip, right? Because I've seen a lot of people like getting it tangled. So this is what I do. Is I'm re as I'm reeling in, I go from quickly to off the stick that's flinging and then it comes off much quicker and you get much better line load that way. Because sometimes this, these can tangle your line up. It gave you that tip, Harry Potter. Yeah. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, Harry, I can see them too. <laughs> right. Flat line lane, nice and tight. Ready to go out on the spot. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look. It's hailing. There we go, you can see it full. I can't believe that. That's how cold it is though. But the birds don't like that. Oh, getting more fast now. Cheeky little hail shower there, look. Can't remember the last time I was carping when it was hailing. Don't know what the fish are going to think about that. It's only going to make the water colder, isn't it? Push them down lower. That's an odd one. Right, anyone that's watching this, what does hail 
do for carp because obviously rain, you know, they love it, the fresh oxygen, you know, it seems to get them feeding, you know, warms up the upper layers. But what does hail do? What does hail do for carp? There you go, all those carpy friends. Let me know what you think. Maybe it makes the set the upper layers cold and pushes them down. I don't know. So we've had winds, we've had really warm sun, and now we've had hail. And now I think it's turned to rain, as it does. Yep. What are we going to get next? A rainbow? <laughs> Heat waves? Well, there we go. I mean, it's got a lot of fight in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that bring was, it was £12.13 ounces. Monster, but it, uh, yeah, it actually ripped off my rod at like 110 yards and then was actually giving me a fight. It was pretty chunky to be fair. Not, I don't mind catching catching specimens of that size. Not that that bit was cold. Oh, it's pretty cold. So the Met Office said it was going to be no, before I come on this trip, said it was going to be no more less than sort of five degrees at night. Today we're supposed to be pissing it down, lower pressure, but no, it's been minus five. And Look, it's starting to freeze in front of the... I don't know if you guys can see that. It's starting to freeze. Oh, yeah, 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 this weather. So, what's happened? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a frosty Ringwood February morning. To be fair, I thought the hard frost were past us now, because we're sort of mid-Feb. I know it can be still, it is still early. Beautiful morning, though. So I've had another another bream. So I think I'm on four or five bream now. Um, another another one over ten pounds. All of them have been over ten pounds. I had that one yesterday. It was twelve pound thirteen, which is only a pound off the late record. So I think I'm going, you know, I think <laughs> going for the specimen cup in the angler's mail. Um, but yeah, so nothing's has happened. It looked, we saw two fish show yesterday and um, the first time I've seen them show for, for 24 hours out there. But obviously it just got mega, mega cold and it, it's minus four at the minute. And it was minus five, minus six last night, which was not what the weather told me on any weather. Because I check a few different, I check BBC, the Met Office, check what it says on the iPhone, a few different places and that. And it, all of them said the same, which was rain and sort of kind of sort of high single temperatures, sevens and eights and all that sort of stuff. But it's not. It's clear sky, a few clouds now, but it's clear sky and absolute mental frost. I see in the bivy. Oh, Robin was just in my bivy then. Their legs, they're so tiny, aren't they? Almost like match, less small than the matchsticks. Now he's on my uh, signet stick, my distance stick. Got 
so misty in that this morning. Cracker. Caught it on film as well, mate. <laughs> what happened? Too cold? <laughs> Don't know, mate. The rollers are getting fucked off. Oh. Brutal. Brutal. Go on. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> 